and I think have now, have, um, now reached um, uh, 1 p.m. So um, welcome everyone to the November AU Chaos uh, Symposium. And um, it's with great pleasure that we have uh, Professor Janju Kim from the National University of Singapore joining us as a, um, a keynote speaker. Um, so uh, I've known JJ for uh, many years, um, perhaps more years than he cares to remember, um, but it's always been a real pleasure um, seeing the work that he has done across different fields, and in particular, his work on um, OLEDs. And he has led many of the innovations um, over the uh, years in the development of OLEDs, um, both in terms of uh, device architectures and through collaborations, different uh, materials classes um, as well. And so um, it really is uh, a pleasure. Uh, he's now an emeritus uh, at uh, the Seoul National University. And I can see he's also a CEO of a, um, a, a, I presume, a startup company. So perhaps we'll learn a little bit more about that um, during his um, presentation. Um, JJ, uh, just so you know, uh, we record um, the, meet, uh, the presentations. Um, if you would not like us to uh, record it, if you can let us know, um, then yes, okay. can turn that off. Um, and then what we do is we then put the presentations up on the AU Chaos website so other people can access them. So if you're okay with that, then we'll, we'll, we'll do that as well. All right. Um, so without further ado, um, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to um, give the presentation today. And uh, I see the title is High Efficiency Deep Blue OLEDs. And just so you know, JJ, it's not, it's on the presenter view and not the presentation view. Um, so I think you need to go to one of the things on the top and change it, but I can't read it because it's in Korean. I'm sorry. So um, you're on presenter view. Yes. Um, and not oh. the... Um, that's a, that's a very strange. Yeah, so I think you have to change it um, with right. one of the at the top, but I'm not quite sure which one it is because it's in Korean. Uh, is it the one on the... Oh, is it yeah. okay? Perfect, absolutely perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay, take it away. All right. Uh, can I start? Yes, please. Okay. Oh, thank you, Paul, for your kind introduction. Also, I would like to thank the uh, for the invitation. Uh, also, thank the audience for participating in this in this seminar. Uh, as Paul mentioned, I retired from Seoul National University and established a company called Juam. Uh, and the company is uh, working on the simulation of OLED or organ semiconductor devices and also fabricate uh, the, the high accuracy the, the measurement setups, such as the measurement of uh, orientation of transient diaper moment of emitters and so on. Uh, today, uh, I would like to discuss on high efficiency deep blue OLED. Uh, the keywords uh, in this talk uh, are the efficiency of OLED and blue. People may ask why do we care about uh, efficiency? Um, I think that uh, everybody knows that efficiency is important to reduce the power consumption uh, in organ semiconductor devices. Uh, not only that, it also contributes to increase the lifetime of uh, uh, all that device, for instance. So the, the in this uh, talk, I, I will mainly use external current efficiency as efficiency, which is defined as the number of emitted photons and the number of uh, divided by number of injected electrons. Uh, my talk consists of uh, uh, as follows, after brief introduction, I will discuss on high efficiency OLED 
which uh, was done, which was done in my laboratory for during the last about 10 years. And then I will move to recent works on the phosphorescent blue uh, OLED based on phosphorescent disensitized fluorescent device and uh, TADF, and also uh, deep blue uh, TTA based fluorescent OLED. Uh, the organic semiconductors uh, attract a lot of attentions uh, due to the possibility to fabricate uh, the large area flexible and, and cost effective devices such as OLED, OPV, and OP, or, or web, OTFTs. Everybody knows that. Uh, device consists of stacks of molecular films, such as here. Uh, OLEDs are using many, many layers, uh, sometimes 20 layers for the stacked uh, devices. I, I have been working on OLED and OPV mostly uh, during the last 30 years or more than 30 years. And then uh, also main focus was on OLED, which are now in uh, place dominant law uh, in, in this place, for instance, for small size display and TVs and signage. So uh, the <coughs> during the last 30 years, uh, since the Ching Teng reported, uh, uh, it created the uh, OLED for the first time in 1987. Uh, efficiency was improved significantly, actually enormously, to about 40% uh, in recent years. Also, the, <clears throat> the, these uh, uh, high efficiencies were realized based on the development of highly oriented phosphorescence a TADF emitters parallel to the substrate combined with advanced device structures. You can see that uh, the, this phosphorus device increased the significantly during the years. Uh, the, uh, until uh, about 2010, uh, the Efficiency of all that was considered to be limited to 20% based on ray optics shown here. This is a square diagram of all that structures reflective index of the organic layers are higher than air, of course, and also substrate. So the significance of light is, uh, is actually the captured uh, inside of the OLED and the only about 20% of the light is outcoupled from the OLED. So that was considered for the, as the limit of OLED based on this array optics. However, it turns out that the uh, dipole model describes the optical characteristics of OLED uh, better than ray optics, including the cavity effect uh, or cavity structure of OLED. And that also cons cons uh, include, uh, consider uh, the many factors, including dipole orientation and bioreferendance, effect of bioreferendance, and so on. Uh, we uh, developed a model, uh, actually simulator ourselves, and that's in use for the commercial production at this moment by Joan here. Yeah. Uh, the, we, uh, the, the utilize that dipole model uh, and uh, the, the, this uh, control plot shows the, do you see the my arrow? Uh, yes, we see that, yes. Your arrow, okay, great, thanks. Uh, this is the control plot uh, of OLED uh, based on uh, calc actually calculator use simulator using the model, the dipole model. And uh, we actually use the optimized device structures uh, with no electrical loss and so on. And we just selected two material parameters of emitters. One, one is the PL corner yield and the ratio of horizontal dipole ratios. That is the, uh, the emitting dipole ratios. Uh, horizontal portion part 
portion of that. And uh, everybody knows that the uh, horizontal emitting dipole gives the higher outcoupling efficiencies than vertical emitting dipoles. However, this uh, orientation, horizontal emitting dipole orientation was not considered much in phosphorescent dyes, especially for residual complexes because uh, of the globular shape of the, of the material. And so that people consider that the EQ limit of iridium based on iridium complex was, was about 26%, even with uh, this, uh, the based on the dipole motions. But uh, uh, the only of 19, uh, 2010, uh, the peoples in Europe reported that uh, phosphorescent dyes can have also uh, the preferred orientation. So that uh, we need to include the the ratio of horizontal dipoles to, to, uh, to actually uh, to get the theoretical limit of, uh, of all that based on phosphorus dyes. And the, the, the result is uh, quite, uh, quite interesting. Instead, uh, uh, the EQ limit is, turns out to be about 45% compared to the 26 or 30%, uh, which was considered to be the limit one limited uh, efficiency up to that point. Now this, we need to, uh, to actually prove that we can realize that this high efficiency over 40%, which requires the PLQI of 95%, also the horizontal dipole ratio of about 90% over higher. And in order to do that, we need to develop emitting materials with high triplet harvesting first, uh, uh, for instance, phosphorescent or TADF dyes, uh, or, and the high PLQI and the high uh, horizontal dipole uh, ratios. Also, we need to have a device with uh, low driving voltage and uh, excellent charge balance and low efficiency lower. Uh, we, we, as I, as I may, as we'll talk later, probably as you may know, the, we developed the XPLEX host uh, which gives a low drive, they satisfy all these uh, set, uh, conditions for that. Uh, the, first of all, I, let, let me introduce you on the, <coughs> the XPLEX host based OLED. The device is, the structure is very simple. This is a whole injection layer, a whole transporting TCTA layer, and the electron transporting layer, B3 pure and PM layers. Yeah, but we use the mixed host of this whole transporting and electrosporting layers. This TCTA and the B3 PIMPM forms XPLEX as manifested in this PR spectrum at the room temperature and the uh, low temperatures. You see that the emission spectra shows a large red shift from the, the consisting materials indicating that the XPLEX uh, is formed in the mixed layer of that. Also, low temperature PL shows that uh, is, uh, the peak is located at the nearly same as the room temperature and indicate the singlet and the triplet uh, energy level is almost the same, which is the natural characteristics of, uh, of XPLEX intermolecular charge transfer uh, complex, excited complex. Uh, excited state charge transfer complex, I'm sorry. So that uh, uh, the, if we uh, dope this uh, iridium complex, for instance, on this that, uh, this, uh, uh, the, this energy level, uh, single energy level can be as much as the same as this iridium complex is. In other words, the, if this electron can be injected, if you look at these structures, uh, the electron, has no barrier to inject from the ETL to uh, this EML because uh, EML contains the same material as the, this ETL. Also, there is the same for hole. And then electron and the hole can recombine to form XPLEX. In such case, XPLEX energy is, uh, is, uh, is almost the same as the, this homolo gap uh, of this uh, uh, mixed layer, mixed host. And the triple layer is almost the same so that the, we can keep the, this gap as the same as the iridium complexes, phosphorus dyes, 
that means this gap can be minimized uh, up to the energy level of that. In other words, driving voltage can be minimized. The energy gap between this one and this one can be about the natural gap of uh, uh, driving voltage, if the tunnel voltage is. So that the uh, low uh, energy barrier and uh, this energy level difference is small, uh, actually equivalent to the photon energy, so that the, the driving voltage can be minimized with that uh, energy barrier. Also, the electron and the singlet can form X-plex. That means uh, uh, polar density can be minimized in the EML uh, to minimize the efficiency error of. Also, energy the barrier from charge injection from this EML to the whole transporting or the EML can be large uh, because of this effect, so that the, the charge balance can be almost uh, uh, one the, in these devices. Uh, so the, the we fabricate device, and it turns out that the, the total voltage is 2.4 volt, and that is the same as the photon energy, that, which is green. So that the voltage is, uh, is almost uh, uh, minimum, uh, actually minimum one achievable in OLED. Also, EQE is 29.1%. Uh, the hitch is almost the same as the uh, theoretical uh, limit, uh, which will be discussed a little bit more in the, in the later part. Also, power efficiency is, uh, is uh, quite high. You can see that's 30%. And uh, the low tunnel voltage and the high EQ uh, result in high power efficiencies uh, in this device. You can see also a lot of this uh, very small in this device. Uh, the, if we compare the power efficiency with the previous reported one, you can see that our device gives much uh, superior uh, performance to the previous ones. You can see here. And uh, we further, the, look, further investigate the thickness, uh, effect of the thickness on the device performance and uh, to get the uh, higher efficiency than 30%, actually 30 31% almost. And the simulation, the device performance were compa uh, was compared with the simulation result. You can see that the very good match between the, the theory and the simulation and the experimental data. This uh, uh, very good con the consistency implies uh, uh, a few facts a few things. What is that the, this device gives a very good charge balance. That means uh, the, the actually internal quantum efficiency, uh, the actual charge balance must be almost one. That means perfect electrical balance with no electrical loss. Uh, also the, uh, the simulator uh, works very well uh, to, to, to actually give the uh, Result. Uh, the, if we compare the simulation result with experimental data, the way the, the we use the iridium PPI3 ACAC, and uh, that which has the PLQI of 94% and horizontal dipole ratio of 77%. Uh, the, the simulation predicted 30% increase. Our the exactly matches with our. Uh, the experimental data. Uh, the, uh, later on, uh, the, to, the, we synthesized many iridium complexes to increase the horizontal dipole ratios. Uh, finally, to reach the, uh, the horizontal dipole ratio of 86%, very close to 90%, to get the 38% of EQS. You see that we use the, this uh, answer ligand, uh, we use the TMD here. And uh, that the, it turns out that this, uh, the, uh, the, the, the answer ligand uh, uh, gives a better, uh, origin, higher horizontal dipole ratio than ACAC. And also this paraposition of pyridine seems to play a major role to increase the 
uh, horizontal dipole ratios as shown here. And the, the, if we put this, uh, the, the, this moieties in this molecule, it gives the elongated uh, effect of elongating uh, the molecular structures to increase the uh, intermolecular interaction between this uh, host, uh, between host molecule and this dopant, uh, resulting in the higher uh, dipole, the, the horizontal dipole ratios. And also, we if we plot the uh, theoretical prediction with the, the experimental data based on the XPLEX host, you can see variable matches indicating that the both simulators and the XPLEX devices gives uh, almost uh, um, the perfect uh, device structures and also simulation result. Also, the XPLEX host plays a uh, a uh, uh, very, very good performance actually plays, uh, uh, plays very well with the TDF uh, dyes. Uh, this is famous the uh, GIS materials and to <clears throat> demonstrate 30% TQs and uh, the low efficiency low. Uh, the GIA had actually reported 20% using single uh, single host uh, the, at the time, but the mixed host, the XPLEX host uh, results in much higher efficiencies. And uh, the, we also, the, for this, these molecules synthesized by Proskaji in, in Japan, we could get the even higher efficiencies. Uh, after that, uh, we, uh, uh, reported uh, crystal OLED, which has a uh, uh, much higher horizontal limiting dipole ratios, over 90%. Uh, the, even though these molecules are standing up against the substrate, uh, the, the transition dipole moment is the horizontal directions because metal metal uh, charge transfer uh, region, uh, the, the, uh, comp the dipoles there. The, <clears throat> Uh, they saw uh, to get the about 39%. This is the still uh, highest efficiency to my knowledge if I do, do not do not miss the recent reports uh, on, on or less. Now this, uh, I think that the efficiencies have already reaches the, uh, the theoretical limit so that the now we can ask what's the most important issue for the ultimate display at this moment, the remaining uh, issues. I think uh, that is blue. Uh, so the, we can ask uh, how we can develop efficient and stable blue OLED. So the, we paid uh, uh, attention to the display OLED during the last uh, several years. And then I will give uh, uh, a few of them uh, today. So first one is phosphorescent dye sensitized uh, fluorescent OLED. All of you know that the uh, phosphorescent OLED gives a higher, higher, much higher efficiency than fluorescent OLED. Uh, however, the, the lifetime issues is different. The, the blue phosphorescent OLED have uh, uh, significant problems, or TDF also still. Uh, in blue, especially deep blue OLED. So this uh, the dye sensitization, sensitized uh, sensitization by fluorescent, fluorescent OLED is another way, which was actually first reported by uh, Steve Forrest group, uh, the, where the phosphorescent and the fluorescent dye are, are codoped in host molecules. Then the, uh, the, and the fluorescent dye uh, was used as the final emitter by absorbing the, by actually getting the energy transfer from host or phosphorescent dyes. Uh, for singlet, that's uh, efficient by first energy transfer. Also triplet to singlet, it is possible uh, by the first energy transfers uh, so that the, uh, finally we can get the external emission, uh, emission from the, the fluorescent dyes. 
Similar concept was proposed by also the Chia Yadachi's group, where the TADF was used as a spin mixer uh, instead of phosphorescent dyes and so on. Later on, uh, we actually the, 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 we used this uh, sensitization concept uh, to the Xplex host ones. You know, in the, the, if we adopt Xplex uh, first dye in Xplex host, we can also get the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the extra emission from, by utilized energy transfer from singlet of Xplex to the first dyes. However, that can be uh, even much stronger if we adopt uh, phosphorescent dyes here. Uh, the, you know that the spin mixing takes place in Xplex without the phosphorescent dyes, so that the triplet can be transferred to fruit dye by conversion to singlet to triplet. I'm sorry, the, but in this case, so triplet can be converted to singlet to translate in the Xplex host. We also reported the papers uh, in separate ones. But uh, if we drop, I'm oh, sorry. We, if we adopt the radio complexes, uh, we can utilize uh, this uh, energy transfer process. Not only that, we also utilize extra uh, uh, heavy atom effect of iridium complexes. That means that uh, the extra iridium complexes can enhance uh, this uh, spin mixing process in Xplex host so that uh, we can utilize the even further increase the energy transfer from the single uh, Xplex to the first dyes. So that's a basic concept of, of our devices. So the, in order to prove that our concept is working, uh, we utilize, we adopt uh, the first dye, this uh, red and uh, yellow emitting and dyes in this uh, molecule, the device, previous device structure. And we, we utilize two phosphorus dyes, uh, RP and RPTMD, as I described before. And then surprisingly, the, I missed one, the, the forest data gave uh, uh, about below 10% increase uh, at the time. But uh, by doping uh, with uh, this uh, the iridium complex and uh, uh, the TPBR, TBRB, uh, the yellow emitting dyes, you can clearly see that the 26% of EQs, which is uh, almost the same as the RP doped device, 27.6% here. So that uh, almost comparable with phosphorus dyes, even though there's a uh, this uh, phosphorus smaller than the phosphorus dyes is, uh, is very high. So we, 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 we think that the Xplex host uh, plays also the good role, actually very good role uh, uh, the, for, to enhance the efficiency in this phosphorescent dye sensitized uh, devices. I think that's a good way. Uh, the question is that uh, uh, the concept can uh, work in for blue OLED. Oh yes, it works. We we uh, now to change the device structure. This is the not forming. Uh, the uh, unfortunately, this device. Uh, the actually this we use the big source, but these two materials does not form Xplex here. So the we could not achieve uh, the. Uh, high efficiency as, uh, uh, as uh, previous ones. But uh, we, uh, uh, we found that uh, our concept is working for blue uh, OLED. So we, we synthesized a little bit deeper blue emitting uh, iridium complexes, this, this dye, and that emits this, this one here. Yeah. Uh, this uh, red and uh, blue emission. And then the T TVP emit uh, this, uh, this one, this color, a uh, purple or the green <coughs> colors. And the uh, emitting ER spectra is almost, uh, almost uh, from the TVP. But uh, you see that energy difference is only peak, 
peak energy wavelength difference between two is the host or phosphorus dye, and uh, this fluid dye is only 10 nanometers. So that uh, people sometimes worry about that uh, you need the UV emitting phosphorus dyes to, to get the efficient energy transfer from phosphorus dye to blue emitting uh, the fluorescent dyes, but uh, you don't need to large energy difference between phosphorescent and fluorescent dyes. You need just small energy difference, uh, uh, which is enough uh, to, to have a uh, 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 good energy transfer from phosphorescent dyes to the fluorescent dyes. Still, we get a 50%. We are working on the developing a uh, blue emitting X-plex host. Uh, if we succeed in, probably we, we are comfortable to get the uh, comfortable to get the efficiency of uh, uh, over 25% using this concept. Uh, in the same year, the German group reported a similar one for blue OLED uh, with a 10% decay but they reported uh, longer lifetimes. Now let us uh, switch gear to move to the high efficiency deep blue TADF OLED. Uh, the, the, the blue OLED has, uh, has two issues. One is that the, uh, this uh, color purity and uh, and uh, efficiency, high effic efficiency, in addition to the device lifetimes. Uh, you see that <clears throat> if we just uh, think, uh, compare the emissions, typical emission spectra uh, of fluorescent phosphorescent TADF dyes, you see that the TADF dyes has, shows uh, uh, the wide emission uh, spectrum compared to the fluorescent or the even phosphorescent emitters as shown here. Uh, this uh, wide emission spectrum uh, may come from the geometric distribution uh, in, of this molecule in thin films. Usually the, the emitters does not, emitters do not have equilibrium uh, load, the lowest energy configurations, confirmations, uh, the, they usually have a distorted one. And uh, especially that is uh, sensitive in TADF dyes uh, because uh, there's a charge transfer uh, because of the charge transfer characteristics of that case. For instance, if we compare with uh, this, uh, uh, compare the energy level of singlets, uh, the as a function of the angle uh, shown here by arrow, you see that the large energy difference is depending on the dietary angles. So small energy to energy difference, even this real range gives a significant uh, energy differences to give a uh, heterogeneous broadening uh, uh, of the, in, in, in the in films. So it is, uh, it is uh, necessary to reduce the, this uh, dihedral angle changes between donor and acceptor angles. Also the vibrational mode contributed to the broadening of, of that case. So reducing the vibration mode by using rigid structures, uh, such as uh, shown here. So by, by just uh, uh, this uh, touching, actually the <coughs> co making covalent bonding between this phenyl and this moieties, you can see that uh, a significant reduction of uh, uh, the this full use at half maximum, and also the uh, the blue shifted emission peaks to get uh, much better color purities. So, so that uh, we need to reduce uh, these vibronic modes and also the dihedral angle uh, changes and so on. So we we uh, further. Uh, we actually the, we the synthesized molecules for the purpose, and the, we uh, use a spirotype donors uh, to get less vibration mode and the deep homo levels. Uh, here, the, we synthesize two uh, 
a spiral compound SAF and SAB as shown here. To the to this uh, spiral, uh, the donor has the lower homo levels than DMAC as shown here. So even though the energy difference is only 0.1 electron volt, still we, we can expect uh, uh, deeper blue emissions using that. Uh, so this uh, <clears throat> also, uh, we expect a less vibrational uh, mode and the diameter angle changes using SAF, um, uh, these uh, donor moieties. And uh, the results are the consistent with our expectations. You can see that uh, this uh, the SAF uh, uh, donor moiety gives the uh, deeper uh, blue with the narrower uh, emission um, spectrums compared to this uh, the, this moiety DMAC compound here. Also, based also the molecules shows the uh, uh, higher horizontal dipole ratios. This is the uh, the DMAC donor, but our case is the uh, the spiral comp the moieties gives a much higher horizontal dipole ratios uh, represented by the by these uh, numbers here. You can see so cases. So this is uh, uh, quite a promising result for deep blue emission and with a high efficiency. We so the, also the way they obtain the energy electric structures of the emitters uh, based on time resolved uh, PL spectrum. Uh, you see that the, that the low temperature PL, uh, the prompt and the delayed component uh, are quite close. Uh, this is a representative fluorescence and phosphorescence uh, emission. And uh, the emission emit, uh, emitting different, the uh, energy difference between single and triplet turns out to be only 0 0.1 electron volt for this SAF. And uh, that is 0 0.9, 0 0.9 for SAB at donor moieties. So that's uh, represented here as this diagram. Also, we uh, could get the triplet locally excited state, yeah. Uh, which the at least triplet early state are located in the acceptor unit. We, we just took the uh, PL spectra of the acceptor unit here and the energy difference uh, between the, the single and triplet is not so big. And, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. We, we obtained the early state here from this peak and that shown here. And the LE and the ones, uh, tri the triplet LE state and the single CT state is very close for SAF. So that the, we expected uh, uh, the fast reverse inter-system crossing rate uh, from this uh, TBDA, TDBA SAF molecules. So that uh, we, we could get the uh, expected uh, uh, high uh, single ratios uh, the, the, from these TDF molecules. So the experiment, uh, the trans transient PL indicates that the RISIS rate is also very high, uh, uh, consistent with our expectations, 2.1 times 10 to the 6. This is a quite high number reported in uh, in literatures with a high PLQI of 90%. So that uh, we can expect uh, large numbers. So in summary, the, the, the photophysical properties of, uh, of the data are, are shown here in this table. See the deep blue, high PLQI, high the inter-system crossing rate, small energy difference between single and triplet, and a narrow full emission, fully that half maximum with high horizontal ratios, uh, the expecting to get the high efficiency, deep blue or red using the molecules. So we fabricated uh, uh, the, the blue or red using this deep pepper, highly polar compound, uh, the, and the normal materials 
using these thighs. Yes, so we, as expected, we could get the 28% of increase with the CIE code of 0 0.09. Uh, it's a deep blue, very good color, as shown here. Uh, and and uh, you know these uh, good characteristics uh, of the uh, device. And if we compare our the device performance with the previous uh, yeah, previous values put in the literature, uh, the, this uh, seems to be quite nice, I think. So deep blue, as you know. Now let us move to the last topic. Uh, that is the TTA-based, uh, uh, TTA, uh, the, the frozen toilet uh, utilizing TTA based on anthrax and derivatives. Uh, usually, the anthracene based uh, blue emitting uh, molecules have uh, such as this uh, shown here, DP, DDP, ADP, have uh, the energy level like this. Uh, this is uh, actually the, the depth calculated energy levels of ADP3PY here. Two times of T1, which is shown as the blue dashed line here. Uh, it's located is uh, is higher than T two or S one state, but lower than quintet energy. Uh, in such case, uh, TTA process uh, so schematically shown in this diagram, energy level is shown here. Uh, the TTA process results in uh, triplet to singular ratio uh, or to uh, the three to one as shown here. That is annihilation of AT1 uh, generate one singlet and the three triplets. So the, this return to triplets. So the, at the loss of five triplets, one singlet is generated. So that the 20, only the 20% 20 of triplet can be converted to singlet in this blue emitting anthracene based uh, the, the molecule TTA based TTA process. So if we consider the conversion of 20% of the triplets to singlets, then we can get the maximum singlet portion is 40% uh, of that. And the delayed component coming from the TTA process uh, is this is 15% and total 40%. So the only 37.5% uh, uh, out of total uh, the, the emission densities comes from the uh, delayed components. So probably you better remember this, the numbers, 40% limit and the 37.5% limit for the delayed emissions. Uh, the, <clears throat> the, the, we, uh, we actually the, the work the revisited this TTA process uh, uh, recently. And then uh, we uh, they worked on the devices using uh, this anthracent based device here. So these three, uh, pyridine, four pyridine, symmetric pyridine compound and the one asymmetric cases with the naphthalin in as other part of the molecules here. And we use uh, this process. This is a little bit different from the normal uh, OLED devices. Uh, this, uh, the whole injection layer and the whole transport layer, EML, and this is CTL. One difference is the uh, this layer, so-called electron enhancement layer, which is inserted between this EML and the ETL here. And this is very thin layer, three, three nanometers. Uh, this uh, this uh, EL layer is known to be used in the, in industries for long times. However, the also this was reported uh, uh, in literature long time ago, just by one paper I, I, we found. But uh, uh, the role of this uh, EL is not 
uh, well, uh, actually they well uh, they capitalized uh, uh, to my knowledge. So uh, we anyway we we used uh, this what these materials as the electron enhancement layer to see what happens, and uh, we we found that this uh, uh, enhancement enhancement is quite high if we insert much higher than the device without uh, these EL layers. Here you can see this is a BBD. This is blue dopant. They are emitting blue. Uh, Blue, blue light. You can see significant enhancement of emission uh, EQEs by using EELs. And uh, this enhancement uh, 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 by EEL turns out to come from the, uh, the, this, um, uh, this uh, the, uh, from delayed component at, uh, as shown in this one. So this is the transient EEL. And you see that uh, this enhancement is, is uh, proportional to the enhancement of a delayed component. So this enhancement is related to the delayed component. And uh, this uh, de delayed emission turns out to be a TTA, we, we think, because this emission, this delayed process uh, characteristic, this uh, decay pattern, is well fitted by TTA models. So this line is a, uh, a model fit by TTA. You can see a very good fit so that uh, we, we are quite sure that this uh, enhancement is, comes from the, this, uh, this, uh, uh, the TTA process in these molecules. You see that uh, this, uh, so the, the TTA process uh, turns out to be, uh, seems to take place uh, in these molecules. But this was also the, uh, confirmed by this uh, thickness dependent uh, EL characteristics. First of all, so that the, uh, the first of all, emission uh, spectrum is mainly from BD dopant, even though the process takes place in ADP3PY here. Yeah. So the uh, this is uh, also if we use the thicker layer, uh, this one, the, the recombination takes place in this layer and then uh, energy transfer may not be uh, enough, 100% because uh, the limit of foster radius uh, to, to reach to these cases. That can be actually shown here. We, if we use a 10 nanometer text, uh, the, we, we observed emission from the, this uh, ADP3 PY layers. Uh, you can see this one, this uh, uh, red one is the, this one, this red and blue, uh, red and black one, sorry. Red and black one uh, comes from the emission from BD dopant. But the AD, if we use a thicker layer, this ADP3PY gives the emission from that, which is shown as the dash dot lines, demonstrating, uh, proving that energy transfer is not efficient, uh, sufficient uh, to, from this one to, that to, to be complete. Uh, the, so that the efficiency was reduced, as, as you can see. So, uh, the process uh, can be can be represented by this by this uh, figure. So TTA process takes place in this EL and energy transfer uh, uh, from singlet to uh, this emitting layer dopant uh, gives the emission from this uh, this dopant. Uh, the uh, uh, because of time limitation, let's just skip here. Uh, one more interesting point uh, of this device is that the, this uh, portion, delayed component portions, uh, this is, uh, it turns out to be 41%, which is exceeding the uh, maximum value of 37.5%. I, I explained the beginning of that. So this is the theoretical limit. 
So we are we we are wondering that uh, this must be uh, what's happening. Why why what, why why this can be one forty one percent? But the difference is small. So some people may argue that uh, well, that can be just experimental um, deviation, some fluctuation, and so on. So this uh, we uh, fabricated a little. We worked a little bit more by making the sophisticated devices to see if we can get the even higher uh, delayed component portions component there. Now we replace the blue dopant here, and also we change the ETL materials to have uh, deeper uh, homo levels. And uh, the PLQI and horizontal dipole ratio are higher uh, compared to the previous one, new one. And uh, also we use uh, these uh, TDF molecules as dopant, fluorescent dopant there. Um, this was published uh, recently and uh, we could get it over 10% TQs, even at 5,000 nits, it's very high here. So this is the highest level, I think, up to now. And now we could get the delayed component of 48%. This is clearly higher than the theoretical limit. So there must be another process, uh, the increasing the, uh, this, uh, the limits of the triplet TTA process in anthrax and derivatives. In order to answer that, we just utilize the TDDFT, and also we, we could get the, uh, this is the electronic structure, uh, <clears throat> the orbital structure of S1 and the T5. T5 is just very, very close to the two times of T1. And you can clearly see that uh, uh, the magnetic moment is different directions from the singlet. So that the tri uh, triplet of uh, magnetic moment of triplet of five is different from singlet. So the L side of the rule is uh, satisfied to get the uh, RIS process from T5 to S1 state. So that uh, 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 this, uh, actually this RIS process seems to take place, uh, direct, <coughs> direct uh, RIS process from the T N state here, T5 state, uh, to the S1 state. So that's uh, the triplets, uh, for triplet formed by TTA process can experience RIS process, not only the intersystem, in addition to the, the intersystem conversion process. If we include this RIS process uh, into these TTA contributions, we can get uh, these equations. So if we uh, synthesize molecules such that uh, uh, intersystem crossing rate is very slow, then we can get the 62.5% uh, singlet uh, portions uh, because all the, this half of these triplets can be converted to this singlet again there. So that the, uh, the if we have uh, this uh, singlet portion of 62.5%, uh, and uh, utilize the uh, convert to all this one uh, to that uh, the theoretical limit of 45%, we could get the, the outcoupling efficiency of 45%, we could get the probably 25% in future. I, I, I am expecting to see the result from other laboratories. Anyway, this is the, five, the, the end of my talk. And uh, this is the summary. So probably you can see the TT process so these are the students who contributed this work. Um, thank you for your kind attention. Well, thanks very much for that, uh, JJ. That was really very interesting as always. Um, <clears throat> are there any questions um, for JJ? Either unmute yourself or um, uh, send a comment through. So perhaps I'll uh, kick the, the questions off. With your exaplex hosts, mm -hmm. have you ever seen a situation where the film PL quantum yield um, doesn't scale with the external quantum efficiency? Based I'm sorry. On, so I, I, I missed. Okay, so, so, so normally, you know, we say the EQE, 
um, equals the PL quantum yield times the outcoupling efficiency yeah. time, whatever. Yeah. So have you ever seen with your exaplex hose the situation where the PL quantum yield is, say, 50%, mm -hmm. um, but the EQE is, say, 20%? That is, yeah. they don't scale as you would normally expect. Oh, the, the, probably let's go to the slide uh, to check that, that I, I accurately understand uh, your questions. You're saying PLQ is 50%, for instance? Yeah, but then the, but then the EQE is say 20%. 26%, not the 23%. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, that's so, because of the pressure factor. We, you know, you know this. Uh, this is the PLQI and the effective quantum yield uh, of the the dyes in in micro cavity, for instance, in OLED, uh, is different from the PLQI in free space due to the micro cavity effect. You know that's so that's called uh, Purcell factor. Yeah. So that the uh, in optimized device structure, uh, I mentioned that this is the we use the optimized device structure to calculate that. And the, in optimized device structure, the outcoupling ef the efficiency was uh, uh, was uh, uh, device was optimized to get the. Uh, the largest EQEs, such that the combined combination of outcoupling efficiency and pulse factors. Sure. You understand? <coughs> so, yeah. but those, the, the PL quantum yield mm -hmm. on the y-axis is measured as a thin film, isn't it? Not yes. in a size. Right. Okay. So there are now some publications uh, in the literature where they will report a film PLQY of say 50%. Yeah. But an EQE of 20%. Mm -hmm. And so um, these include exaplex hosts. And so I was wondering whether you have ever seen that yourself with your devices. Um, I am I am very much sure that I understand your question uh, completely. But the your question is the PLQI of thin films. Yeah. So uh, the in, in film state was uh, twenty percent. Was fifty percent. Yeah. And then the EQE from the device was say twenty percent. Yeah. So it was double what you would expect from the PLQY. Have you ever seen that uh, in your devices? Um, the actually the oh the. Still, I, I don't understand your question. It's all right. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The... No, no, it's a bit of a complicated question to do sort of via Zoom. I, I, I realize that. Um, so don't worry. It's cool. Um, no, no, but... no. Probably we can continue. The... Your question is that the, 20, the, the outcoupling efficiency limit is 46%. According to this diagram, sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the the emitters with PLQI of fifty percent can reach twenty three percent, but right. the, the actually that give the, the theoretical prediction gives twenty six percent. Yeah, providing uh, you have um, very good outcome. The, that is due to the 
higher PLQI, effective PLQI, than 50% in OLED micro cavity effect. Yeah. So that we, we, we can expect uh, uh, higher than 23% EQEs, even yeah. with this 50% cases. Yeah. And the last three you question that the, uh, I can, we have had uh, whether if, uh, if we have had uh, higher EQEs than the expectations. Yeah. Uh, but the, usually the, when we use the XPlex hosts uh, in our device, uh, the, we could get the very much, very good match of efficiencies as shown in this, uh, in this slide yeah. here. So this, we, this is experimental data compared with the uh, uh, theoretical EQs so that uh, we did not observe a much difference between this theoretical and experimental data. Okay. All right. Um, are there other questions that people might have? Probably too clear. Uh, it's not I clear. think it must be very clear. Um, <laughs> so there are no other questions. Um, all that remains is me to thank JJ for um, joining us uh, today. It's been wonderful to have you uh, give your presentation to see how really, you know, your own OLED work has developed over you know, the years and, and the most recent results that you've got, which are very exciting as well. So uh, thanks again for accepting the invitation and uh, hopefully um, we'll get to see you in person or those of us who travel to the relevant conferences, <laughs> we'll get to see you okay. in person soon. So thank, thank you. Again. Thank you for your kind attention. And also I lost my pressure to, uh, to give a talk in this Australian and the, this uh, communities, organic semiconductors. Thank you. Okay, thank you and goodbye. Bye, bye.